Hey, everybody, and welcome to another live episode of The Grid. My name is Scott Kelby, and I'm joined by my co-host, a man barely alive, the human trader hitch, Mr. Matt Kliskowski. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. At least I'm not, was it multi-breasted? Ambidextrous. Flatulent. There we go. Hey, he said them all. <laughs> anyway, welcome, everybody. We have a great show for you today. Uh, today, our topic is the photographer State of the Union. We'll give you a hint up front. It's not pretty. It ain't pretty, <laughs> but it's real. So I hope to stick around for that. Uh, just a couple of quick things. This guy, Matt Kluskowski, has a brand new ebook. It just came out. I do. Photoshop for landscape photographers. Yeah, Photoshop Lightroom. It's actually more Lightroom and Photoshop for landscape Lightroom photographers. And Photoshop photographers. For landscape. That just doesn't flow as well. But uh, yeah, it just came out. It's on Amazon and it's on the uh, the iTunes or the iBook store too. How much? Uh, uh, Nine ninety nine, and it's just uh, it's my my workflow for landscape photography. I took a sunrise, a sunset, shooting into the sun, like a beach, uh, waterfall. Like I took like your typical landscape shots, and then I processed processed them, showed them the whole workflow. Excellent. Go check it out at those places. Hey, uh, if you're just watching, well, Matt and I literally have been in meetings. All day. Yeah, it's been one of those days. We have not had a chance to spread the word about the grid today, uh, just just in the last few minutes. Could you help us out and just yeah. go to Facebook, go to Twitter, go to G+, and just real quick, hey, come watch the grid. There's more of you than us. So yeah, We actually guys. need an audience today, and we kind of, we it, it's on us. You're helping us out, so if you <laughs> would do that, thanks very much. Hey, one last thing before we, we get into today's topic. Uh, Colby Brown, you guys know Colby Brown. Colby Brown, wonderful uh, photographer and uh, just a great guy. Uh, did a class on building your social media audience over at Kelby One, and people have been tweeting all week about it. People have been sending emails. Yeah. Apparently, his class is off the chain. I, I'm, re I'm reading tweets where people are going like, "This is exactly what I needed." You know, he puts together a roadmap for you. So, if you're a Kelby One subscriber, go over and watch Colby's class. There it is, social media for photographers, right there. See the little hand that moves in front of it. Watch this. I love the way this is. Look at that circular, Circle. up and down, uh, up and down. Great. Ooh, ooh, eights. They're doing Figure crazy eight. eights. This is great. <laughs> now, Colby rocks, and, and Colby knows that stuff at a level that, that not many not many people dive into Yeah, he has like millions of level, followers. So. He's, he's, he's very, very popular, yeah. so I hope to check it out. Of course, we have some giveaways for you today. Uh, we're going to be giving away a bunch of stuff. We have an Olo clip for you, the all, very, very popular Olo clips. Is there anybody in the world that didn't recommend an Olo clip as a Christmas gift this year? <laughs> all right. So uh, they make all kinds of different lenses and accessories for photographers for your iPhone. And we have the Lightroom 5. Five book for digital photographers by Scott Allo Kelby. And we're giving away a full year subscription to Kelby One. So hope you check that out. Our topic today, State of the Union for Photographers. We're going to get to it right after this break. Don't go away. And I meant that. <laughs> The key to the headshot and capturing a great headshot or portrait for that matter is expression. You can have great lighting, you can have a great subject, you can have a killer background, but if you don't have expression, in my opinion, you got nothing. Hey, my name's Peter Hurley. I'm a portrait photographer in New York, and here I am in my city. I knew I was a portrait photographer because that's what I do. I just am intrigued by the fact that we all look so different. We have so many different expressions we can make. Why not go for them? Maniacal. The art of capturing expression is simply working with your subject to get organic and spontaneous life out of them. Human stuff. Now forehead like a chicken. Hold that, hold that. I like that, good. When you have a person, technical is out the window. I'm 90% therapist, 10% photographer. The technical's done. I'm Peter Hurley and it's all about making faces in portraiture. Come check out my class at kelbytraining.com. Shebang, shebang, shebang! Number one catchphrase. I love that Peter Hurley commercial. I, know. <laughs> I swear, I can, every time, you know how many times I've seen that thing? I love it. Yeah, and you know what it is about Peter is, is in, like, until you've been in front of his camera, you really can't appreciate just how good. He, he is, is good. at it, and, but he is. I can't. I can't think of anyone he is better. So than, than good Peter. at it. Yeah, you're right. I don't. I mean, he's the headshot master. What a great name for his class. Hey, uh, Matt, you're in Kentucky on Friday. Yes. You yes, don't I, hear that sentence every day, do you? <laughs> I leave for uh, Cincinnati tomorrow afternoon and uh, teaching in Kentucky on Friday. 
And then next week, I'm in Richmond on Wednesday. So it's uh, February 5th, next Wednesday. This Friday, January 31st, Light Room 5. They can still come and see you, right? If they, if they haven't signed up for Kentucky or Richmond? If you haven't signed up, yeah. I, we will still accept you to come see. Yeah. Yes. Hey, I'll be in Tampa, as you can see right there on screen. Uh, my Shoot Like a Pro Tour kicks off first one of this year in Tampa, Florida. And then a few days later, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, home of the Atlanta Falcons. So uh, looking forward to both of those. Uh, you can find out more. Just go over to, uh, what is it now? Kelby1.com slash. Don't ask me that one. Live. Live. Kelby One Live. Kelby One dot com slash live. There hey, we go. so let's talk about our topic. Our topic today is State of the Union for photographers. And I thought, you know, we're doing this on on the heels of the the big the State, State of the, of the Union. Union, presidential State of the Union, and um, we wanted to look at some things like what, like look at the last year, looking at at the emotional state of of photographers, mm -hmm. which I think we're going to talk a lot about today. The physical state of technology and things like that, because you know what, in in the space of this last year, things have changed a lot, and so I, I kind of want to look at where we are now and kind of try to help where we're going. And this isn't going to be like set your camera to this. <laughs> no, it's not a settings show. You know, you're, everyone was using the wrong f-stop last year. This year's hot f-stop is, you know how Pantone does that? Like they pick the hot colors yeah. of the year, you know? We're not doing that today. But uh, here's what I want to I, I want to start off with. We're going to cover a lot of things. But I do want to tell you, we want your comments. So if you want to drop us a comment there in the chat, please feel free. And we'll try to work your comments in as, as much as we can during the show. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about, I want to start with, is I've, I've seen a, a raft. Is that the right word? It means a bunch. A raft? I, I kind of like a bunch. A bunch <laughs> of articles this year. And, and I see them every week. I, I don't know if you guys use Zite. It's an aggregator. Yeah. And, and you can say, I only want to see stories on photography. And I watch Zite very much. It's an app for the iPad. Um, I watch Flipboard. And it's... And it's, I say every week, it, it feels like every day. You see another, is photography dead? Mm -hmm. Is real photography dead? Are professional photographers dead? Like, like week after week after week. And it starts to weigh on you. It really does. Because you're starting to see, and, and they're, they're trying to make the case, basically, of a, a bunch of things. Well, Go. For, first, because yes. the, the one thing they're trying to do is they're trying to catch your attention with a headline. Yeah. First and foremost, which That's is what, because sometimes the, the article doesn't even say all those bad things, but they're trying to catch your attention with a headline, which is which kind of bad because I think sometimes if that's all people see, you automatically get this preconceived. Right. Even if you don't read the article, about, yeah. you saw a headline that said, that's a very good point. Photography yeah. is dead. So th this is a thing that, that we see, and I see them again and again and again, and they run in a couple of themes. Um, one of the themes is that your cell phone is killing all photography. Mm -hmm. Instagram is killing all photography. So that's one theme. But another theme I think is, is there's a little bit of, well, it's not a little bit of truth to it. There's a lot of truth to it, but it's how we react to it. And that is, you know what we're experiencing just as photographers in general. Now I want to talk about the people that are complaining the most are professional photographers, people that make their living over this. Yeah. And I understand it because, you know, for example, if, if you were a wedding photographer, you're in your town, and let's say that there were six really good wedding photographers there 10 years ago, five years ago. Let's just use five years. Mm -hmm. Five years ago, there were six good – and, and if a wedding was going to happen in your town, it was one of these six photographers pretty much. Now there are in that same town 60 wedding photographers. At least. Or 120 wedding photographers that there may not all be as good, but now – there's 120 to choose from, not just six. And so the six that used to have all of the weddings tied up, they're seeing their pie get cut smaller and smaller and smaller. And, and I want to give you an, an idea of, of what this does to a working professional. So many years ago, like three, I was in a band. I used to make my living in a band. I, I'm, I'm based in the Tampa Bay area. and I was playing in Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. I kid you not, we're going back to 1980, 80-something. <laughs> No, I'm going to say 81, 82, 83, so when I was three years old. Um, <laughs> we were playing in Tampa Bay, and we would play in, in, in a nightclub for five days, like five days a week. And literally, we would get maybe between $2,000 and $3,000 a week pay for the band. Mm -hmm. So if there were six of us or five of us, we, we did pretty good, right? You had $3,000. Well, I got out of the business a couple years ago. <laughs> 
Anyway, and I talked to guys later, like down the road, 10 years down the road, fine, you know, whatever. And I'd go, hey, man, how's the business? God, I've been out of it so long. And they'd go, oh, dude, it's, it's horrible. And I'd go, why? Well, remember how we used to make two grand a week or three grand a week? Yeah, that same club now doesn't have just one band. They'll have three bands a night that play for free. Like the headlining act now gets $100. <laughs> The other band gets 50, and the first band maybe doesn't, don't get anything. There are so many bands available mm -hmm. today that it decimated the market for professional bands. But here's the bad thing. It's not like those bands were crap. Like the bands yeah, today, I would say that the bands today, the ones that will play for free, are better than our paid bands were back then. The equipment's better. The musicians are better. The access to lighting and all these kind of things is tremendously better. That's another thing. Like and I'm talking about musicians, but this really applies to photographers. So if I go to, to uh, Guitar Center now and I look at a mixing console, ones that I used to dream of, yeah. they were out of our range. They're five thousand dollars. Now they're now stuff that does more than that, cleaner, better, and smaller and lighter, are like four hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, dude. I mean, they like. I mean, you, you probably did the same thing like back in the day. I used, to play, I used to play my guitar into a tape recorder to record the background chords. Oh, yeah. So that I could practice could play soloing over. over it. And it's like... Now you go to uh, guitarbackingtracks.com. They've got the whole thing ready for you. For a dollar. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's technology that helps you learn and stuff. But like, so what they've done is they, they've, they've, they've lowered the bar to entry to be mm -hmm. a good sounding musician. You can buy a great amp for 99 bucks. You couldn't buy a great amp for 99 bucks when we were playing. You can buy anything for 99 bucks. I don't even know, know. Matt's quite a good guitar player, quite an accomplished guitar player. And back in our day, it was all so expensive. And now, yep. so this is what's happened to photography. Now, an entry-level camera takes amazing photos. The kit lenses that we used to complain about are actually pretty good. You don't have to be spending a tremendous amount of money to get into the photography game and be using decent equipment and making good photos. So what's happened is it's, this is the classic story of supply and demand. Demand, I think, for photography because of websites has gone up. Yeah, more people are using photography. More people are using photography. You can't have a website today that's not full of photography. But the problem is if demand has gone up by 30%, Supply of photographers that can take a good photo has gone up by 500%. But to your, your, your Ben example, did, did he say, like, why are people playing for free? Well, the reason why they're playing for free is because there's so much supply. There's so many bands. So, so exposure, maybe? Like, are they oh, yeah, it for exposure? They want to be out there playing. They, and they're hoping to, to move up the food chain to get the, the $50 a night and then maybe get the $100 a night. But the fact of the matter is, is back in our day, I, I kid you not, there was like eight bands and we were in a circuit. So we'd play Times Square one night, then we'd go to the Casbah for the next week, and you would go to these different clubs, the stables, and you would play these clubs in a circuit. There was eight bands. That was it. Dude, there's eight bands playing on a Friday night now at the club. You know what I mean? It's like the, 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 the number of bands has expanded so much, and this is what's happening to photography. There's so many people. You know, I, there was a point where if you said, I need a photographer who can shoot the New York Yankees, how many qualified photographers were in New York City that could give you a professional quality shot of the New York Yankees? 30, 40? How many photographers in New York City today could go and shoot a Yankees game that have the equipment and have the knowledge because you can go get it online through an online class or whatever to go yep. get an acceptable quality shot of, of the, the New York mm -hmm. Yankees? Yeah. And hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. So if, if you say, I don't want to work for that money, I'm not gonna, there'll be 100 photographers that'll stand and go, I'll do it. Like you said, because that's why I was trying to draw a parallel to, to the music because they're doing it for exposure. Maybe they have, maybe, so it could be, they want to get exposure because maybe they want to get another job. We all know photographers who've shot something for free to get exposure so that maybe they'll get that next job. Maybe they have something else to sell. So we all know photographers that have shot something for free yep. because maybe they have another package that they... Or they want to build their portfolio or something so exactly. they can get it. And now, I don't want anybody to think that Matt and I are saying that that's a good thing. I, I think it, it does hurt when anybody starts to do... Free yeah. work, it, it hurts. I absolutely, absolutely. So, 
the problem, I guess, is, is we have to just come to grips with this. You know, because I run into a lot of bitter people who read these stories and go, yeah, there it is again. You know, I'm at a football game. I'm, I'm on the road at a football game. And the, the, the in-house stadium people start posting pictures from the stadium taken by fans. It says, from our Twitter feed. And it shows people, you know, we're number one. Yeah. And the guys next to me are like, there go our jobs. There they are. They're stealing everything. You know, it's like... <sighs> This stuff is evolving. It really is. And you can do one of two things. You can go the bitter route. You can keep reading those stories about photography's going away and da 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 da. Or you could go, you know what? I wasn't making a whole lot of money shooting pictures of fans up in the third <laughs> balcony. You know what it is? I've been hired to do this. Yeah. So I think that we have to change the way we look at this stuff. So I think the State of the Union in this particular topic is this. We are legitimately experiencing a glut of supply that, that is so much more than the increase in demand, and it's just going to get worse. Because the more time people spend with their phone and they get better at it, they're going to fall in love with photography. You know how many people I've talked to that are buying DSLRs because they thought, hey, I'm pretty good with this yeah. you know, phone right. thing. And somebody's told them. Somebody, somebody and someone's said, like, yeah, wow. I love that shot. And they're moving on. The, the supply of photographers is never going to go down. So first, give up. Oh, here's the other one I see. You read a newspaper just used a shot from Instagram. Yeah. Do you know how upset people got about that? Oh, my God. You know, they, they're, they're now, now, now we're all out of it. Guys, this is just where it's at. You can be bitter about it or you can say, you know what? Why aren't I taking better pictures on Instagram? Maybe I should get on Instagram instead of cussing everybody that that for the fact that the New York Times was it the New York Times that used an Instagram? I forget. It was a big, big major newspaper used an Instagram photo, and the Sports Illustrated used an Instagram photo. Why aren't you out there making great Instagram photos? Look, you got to go with where it's at, and I think that's one of the things that we've got to do um, because good-looking images are easier than they've ever been, and that's not a bad thing. What about the guy that wrote in a couple weeks ago? Guy came in with a comment just a couple of weeks ago, um, and he said, what do you guys think about these photographers that go in and they buy a camera, buy a good camera. Yeah, I remember they, this one. They go get some Photoshop actions, and their images look great. What do you think about that? You know what I think? High five. Yeah, good for him. Why would we want to be angry at somebody because... They can make good images, and it's not as hard as it was for us. You know what? I learned a lot of things the hard way. You learned a lot of things the hard way. What do we make our living at? Trying to not make people <laughs> do, it <laughs> do it the, the hard, hard way. way. <laughs> Just because we do it, we want to help you. We want you to make good pictures. So when that guy asked that question, what do you think about somebody that goes and buys a bunch of actions and they're making good pictures? And I say, fantastic. That's what it, all we. That's all we, we all want is we want to make better images. It's innovation. It's, it's innovation. It is. It, it's it's innovation at its core, and and it's not, it's not something we're gonna change. No. Nope. So it's just so, gonna move faster. Yeah. So rather, so so your your goal, I guess, is you're not gonna change it. Figure out what to do with it. How yeah. to take that innovation. How to be the person that uses it to that next level to to continue your business or to make your business if yeah. you don't have one yet. Complaining about it isn't isn't gonna do it. Nope. Being bitter about it isn't going to help you. None of these things are going to help you. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget, I bought this keyboard. It was one of the first sampling keyboards. So I used to have to have, and I'm not joking with you, when I played back in the day, I took six keyboards with me. Yamaha Electric Grand, a 100D6 Clavinet, a Korg Poly 6, a Fender Rhodes, I had an Arp Omni, and I had an Oberheim OB-1. I have six keyboards. I used to have to drive a van to move my keyboard. <laughs> One day I bought a sampling keyboard. It made piano sounds. It made trumpet sounds. My dad comes in. I'm showing him, like, Dad, look, it sounds like a trumpet. Look, it sounds like a piano. You know what my dad says? This is going to pull. This is going to put a bunch of keyboard players out of work. Yeah. I that's mean, it for musicians. A bunch of musicians. Yep, that's it. They're all sunk. I'm like, no, they're not. I'm able to do more things. I'm already a musician, and this allows me to do more things. I wasn't hiring a brass section. I can tell you that. I wasn't hiring a sting, string quartet. That's what's happening in photography, right? Our cameras allow us to do more things than they ever did. Photoshop, Lightroom. I wasn't sending my stuff to the dark room a lot of times. I wasn't having, like, a really good lab. I saved my lab for my best stuff. Yeah. I did not send it to a lab unless I knew I could go in and talk to the guy and go, can you make this a little darker? Can you burn in this? Can you dodge that? 
I did most of the time I went to, to Walgreens, the equivalent of Walgreens back then. This is way back then, kids. <laughs> anyway, just remember this. There's still plenty of work out there. There's more work than there's ever been, but you have to be better at it. Now, well, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, I want to read your questions. Brad sent me a real, that's Brad, I'm pointing to Brad like you can see him, but Brad is over there. Brad Moore sent me a really great quote, and I'm going to read it verbatim, but well, Brad's paraphrasing. I'm going to read Brad's paraphrasing when we come back from Dave Black, and I think it puts this whole state of the, this part of the State of the Union in a really good place. So stick around. We'll be right back here on The Grid. Don't go away. The gear isn't your trophy. It's the photographs you take. Hey, I'm Zach Arias. Follow me for two days as I shoot street portraits. And then I sit down with a Pulitzer Prize winning photo editor to talk about photography. So check out my class, the $5,000 challenge at kelbytraining.com. Hi, my name is Dave Black and I'd like to welcome you to Kelby Training where you can come join me on my light painting landscapes class. One of our locations is gonna be at one of the most famous, iconic barns here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Not only will we do light painting there, but we will also do some soft focus technique. The site survey will give us an opportunity to look at our subject and start to figure out where we'll have camera position and where we would be applying the light painting from. Now just because we're out here in the great outdoors in a big national park, don't think you can't do these at home. All the basics and fundamentals that we'll cover in this video will teach you how to get into light painting landscapes, whether you're out here in Teton National Park or right in your very own hometown. Come to my light painting landscapes video at kelbytraining.com. I hope to see you then. Hey, we are back. Scott Kelby here with Matt Kluskowski. We are in the middle of the State of the Union for photographers. Uh, and I, we got some of your comments here. A house writes, the same thing is happening to photography as happened to design. Boy, is that true. Photographers like designers just have to step up their game and learn another aspect to their profession. And that is being business oriented. House, let me tell you, That's when I, years ago, I, was, I still remember it was, I was in Orlando, Florida, and I was teaching a class about PageMaker. You know how long ago that was? Mm -hmm. And I was, I did a class on the, the, uh, the essentials of typography. And a guy comes up to me after the class and he's quite agitated. <laughs> and basically uh, he was angry at me for teaching this because he was a traditional typographer. He had been setting type by hand. His dad had been setting type behind him and he's watching me on screen set type. And he comes over and goes, just want you to know, you're not a typographer and this stuff's never going to catch on. It's never going to be as good and blah, 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 blah. And all I'm thinking is like, dude, you better be learning page maker yeah. because no one is going to do it that way anymore. And of course, no one does it that way anymore. I mean, it's, it, it transformed like that. So what, what house was saying about that's what happened to design. You had designers that were doing paste up and we were doing, my wife and I had a design business. We were doing paste up. We were doing all this kind of stuff. I mean, we were sending out for stat camera. That's how I got into Photoshop because I was having to send out uh, black and white stat prints to be printed to stats for layouts and I hated the way they looked I just couldn't stand all the dots and the dot screen was so bad and they, they were flat and just anyway That's what got me into Photoshop in the first place, but that's what happened to design all of a sudden everybody could buy page maker then in design and quirk express and and it revolutionized design and that's a great thing because we have a lot of people today that are great designers and we employ a whole bunch of them here and but for the people that were bitter about it and said, no, this isn't right and it's not fair and it, it, yeah. they all got yeah. left behind. Don't get left behind by this. And there's also like design, uh, you know, business cards and, and all those other things. You can go online and you, you can have you can go online and have your full media design kit for your company. Oh, yeah. Basically for ninety nine dollars. They'll do everything. Forty nine business card. I mean, whole collateral it's, package. Yeah, and then it's not that they're designing it. You're just picking from templates. Yeah. And you're putting your stuff on there, and it looks great. Yeah. The, so, um, Rikachika. 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 Very one, and I. So I, I have a little story with this one. He says, "No money is no one has money to spend," and uh, it's funny that this hits today because I just got an email today. Um, 
and it, it's from a company you would have heard of that wanted to buy or use one of my photos. And so when I went back with what they wanted, I went back with what the price range was depending on what they wanted to use it for. Yeah. It was, it's just funny how it came back. And, and the, the, the money is drastically lower than what I'd want to charge, which I don't think which was unreasonable. Yeah. So, so no one's got money to spend. And this is a big company. This is a big, you'd say, oh, wow, they got tons of money. Oh, but. yeah, everybody's got budgets and things today. And that's true. And you know what? The same thing is in the wedding market. But there are still people that, that, that buy $25,000 to $100,000 on their wedding. Mm -hmm. I talked to a photographer very short that at the end of the day when all the books were done, and the whole, it was $100,000. There are still people that, let me put it this way, every ballroom at every four seasons in America <coughs> excuse me, you, is booked up. If you want to have your wedding there next month, call the Four Seasons. They're going, oh, you want it next month? We're booked up for nine months. Every one of those has a very expensive wedding photographer. Why not you? So I'm, Yeah, that's so, a good point. I mean, seriously, every Four Seasons in America, every Ritz-Carlton, every fancy hotel, you try to call and get your wedding booked in there, they'll tell you, we're booked up. And those are all high-end, very expensive, Super. I mean, you know, I, I just went to. I, we I shot one at the Ritz Carlton. I went to one at the Four Seasons, and um, yep, there. You know, they. It's not they, Uncle Bob. Oh no, it's not Uncle Bob. There are still the Uncle Bobs. You know, stealing your jobs out there. But anyway, some more comment. W Wumpus. Wumpus. I like that one. Says yes, but I. What I think is needed is educating the client into raising their expectations and not settling for bad photography. Also, I think digital must be sold, not prints. People want products for social media. I, Wumpus, I agree with everything from the word also on. Also, I think digital must be sold, not prints. Agreed. People want products for social media. Absolutely. I think you have to do both, but absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the thing what you talk about educating the client into raising their expectations, you know what? Clients fit into different things. And you know what? It, it's how you're, you're going to have a really hard time doing that. I know some great salespeople are able to sit across the desk from somebody and go, look, you want to hire me for $10,000 because I'm going to deliver this. But the problem is that's, you're really, it's really hard to talk people into under appreciating great photography. Yeah. I mean, you either do or you don't. And I, and I know it would be wonderful. It'd be a wonderful world if you could just say, Look at this stuff. That's what five hundred dollars gets you. Look at my stuff. That's five thousand. But you need to get to them before that, though. Yeah. Because if if you're able, if you're able, if you're at the point where you can educate them, then you're far down the line. You're oh, yeah. you're you're really close to getting a job if you're at the point where you can educate yeah, them. Yeah. You got so, them sitting across so from you. It's yeah. It's it's before. It's how to figure out. But how, how do you do get, that? How to get these people? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, how do you educate? That's like saying. You know, we want to sell paintings. We should educate the public on what fine art is. What's a good painting from a bad painting? How would you do that? How could you even uh, hope to do that? I don't know. You know what I mean? It's because yeah. it's, it's all so subjective. And what someone will look at your work and go, I don't know, it looks the same as this guy's. And you're like, what? You know, it's, it's like, how do you get people? This is another one. How do you get people to appreciate good audio? Right? Yeah, that's a tough one. It is. Okay. It's, it's, By the way, can I tell you something interesting about how technology is changing our lives? I went to Best Buy. I wanted to buy a, uh, I have an old cassette that we recorded in a recording studio. I want to convert it from an old cassette into digital. So I went to Best Buy, you know, Best Buy giant store. I want to buy a USB cassette recorder. So I asked, where's the audio department? And they said, Oh, we don't, we don't have an audio department. I go, you know, where you sell speakers and amps. We don't sell those. We have a home theater. <laughs> we have a home theater department. Yeah. But, you know, the market for that component stereo stuff, remember everybody used to own a Pioneer stereo. Big speakers. Everybody heard big speakers. <laughs> and you had, you had like an, uh, an amp, and then you had Equal a receiver. Yeah, then dude. you had an equalizer. Then you, you had all this stuff. And you would sit at home and listen to stereo, Right. There is no department like that. You, would, you go to the home theater, and you, you can get a home theater system and play audio through it. But that market has evaporated. And I grew up with that being such an important. You lived. We used to go to a place called Sound Advice. Yeah, I remember Sound remember Advice. Remember Sound yeah. Advice? Okay, anyway. Uh, MC Squared, which happens to be Tony Curtis, a man barely alive, who's watching us, I believe, from a naval base in Sicily, says, the more competition, 
the better the photographers are now. It is helping photographers to be more skillful in details and more creative in my humble opinion. It does. The more photographers that are out there, you, it makes you raise your game. It is pushing photographers to get better and better. Well said and bella bella cucina to you. Uh, RC. <laughs> RC says, oh, is this? Okay, here's RC's. About RC. About, this is, it's RC. RC, because he's not on the set here, but he's in the building. So many people believe that getting a camera and getting action still makes a photographer. Those are the tools. The tools have nothing to do with your vision. If you have no vision, all the tools in the world won't help. There are millions of pianos out there, not that many pianists. Very, very well said. So, and I kind of said this when we talked about that guy who said, what about the guy that buys the camera and runs the actions and his shots look great, that's unfair? What that means is that person was talented because buying a good camera and a bunch of actions will not get you good photos. Nope. But, because it all has to start with your shot. Yeah, got to be a good photo. It's it got to be a sharp be a photo. Good photo. It has to be a sharp good photo. Moment. It has to be a good moment. All those things have to happen first. So if that's there, then running the actions can make it better. Yeah, because chances are this person was talking about some type of a portrait photographer, right. whether it's family photos or right, wedding or right. events. And, and you, you, don't, you don't get people to buy your work if you don't capture good moments of them. Exactly. Well said. All right. This is what, is this what you sent me, Brad, here? All right, so this is, this is from Dave Black, I guess, said it. And, and Brad's uh, uh, paraphrasing it, but it, this is a great, I read it, I was like, wow, this really says it. Here's so, we're paraphrasing Dave Black. <clears throat> if you think of the <clears throat> photography industry as a pyramid, then 20 years ago, the base may have been this wide because the barrier to entry was so big with the expense of film and developing and printing and everything else you had to have the money for to get started. Now the base is this wide, it's very wide, because, because everyone is a photographer with digital. It brings the cost down of everything, so anyone can jump in if they want. But the pinnacle of the pyramid, the top, <laughs> <laughs> the graphics, is still small. There is still only a small number of photographers who make it to the top of the game because it still takes hard work and skill to get there. It's just more difficult to stand out so you can make it to the top because of all the people at the base of the pyramid. Yeah. I love Dave Black. Yeah, he's very deep. Thank you for sharing that, Brad. Great way of putting it. All right. Uh, so anyway, that was, that was one of the things that I think we need to talk about as the State of the Union. So the State of the Union is we have to deal with is there incredible supply and not nearly as much demand. Though demand is more, it's still the supply way outrages way. it. Number two, I want to let you talk to um, the post-processing. How has post-processing changed in the last couple of years leading up to where we are today? Um, yeah, so we, I think we, we, we hear it all the time. So you taught Photoshop back in the day when, when everything we taught revolved around levels and curves and oh, channels, yeah. um, calculations and all these different things. Every, everything we taught revolved around these tools. I had chapters in my book on curves. Yeah. I had taught a class on my tour, a whole class was just on curves. Yeah, and, and so where we are today is, is very, very different because, uh, and, and the best way I can do is I can give an example. So uh, we, have, we have a whole bunch of classes going out for, for Kelby One next month. I did a class called Photoshop Basics for Photographers and I did, something, I did something very different for this class, which is it's the first time I've done it. Um, I started off, I have, a, I have a lesson on exposure, brightness, contrast, and color of your photos. And I started the lesson off by saying, if you've, if you've seen any Photoshop before, you've seen people, and I went to the image menu, saw levels, curves, color contrast, the whole thing. I said, you've seen those things. I said, that's not today. Today is, and I went into camera raw, and I showed them, I said, exposure, contrast, uh, shadows, highlights, blacks, whites, vibrant saturation. I said, this is today. These are the tools that we use. I understand somebody may have told you you have to get Photoshop to use levels and all these things, but that's not what photographers use today. The, the, the future of this are these tools right here. And I said, and there's a reason why. And I showed him, so I showed him it was this one little compact panel. All right, and then, this big. And then I jumped out of it and I went back to Photoshop. I said, so you can have that little panel that's got everything you could want to do to your photo. Or 
you can come up to this menu, and I went to the image menu, showed adjustments, and I said, you can open this window, and then make an adjustment, and then close that window, then open this window, then close that window, then open this window, and I went through like seven windows to get the very, very same thing. And so it, it, this, the, state of, the state of photography today and when it comes to post-processing is that it's way, way different than it used to be. It, you, don't have to, you don't have to walk up to school both, uh, uphill both ways to process your photos. You, you can move six or seven sliders and it's amazing at the change and the difference that you can make into your images. So it's really reduced the barrier of entry to this stuff. Right. And so you have to realize in photography, there are things that we used to use that we use day in and day out that we just don't do anymore. We just don't do them. Um, in, so in current versions of my Photoshop for mm -hmm. photographers book, I removed the entire chapter on curves. I, I put it on the web because honestly, why would I teach you something that I don't really use? You're buying a book for me. Here's how I use Photoshop. I don't use curves anymore. Yeah. I don't really know anybody that is, but I can tell you this, people that learn curves are very, very defensive about it. It's like me talking to the guy and saying, we don't use typography anymore. He learned typography. He was invested in typography, but in the, in the scheme of things, he's very upset that that technology has changed. You may use curves. You may be very good at curves. You may not want curves to go away, but that's not where the future is. There will never be another feature added to curves in Photoshop. Adobe's never going to go back and say, let's go and, you know, yeah. let's, let's go and start adding things to this feature that no one uses it, at all anymore. And what, what's happened is, 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 is just people have gotten comfortable with what they know. I, 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 there, there is a... There was a comment on a website yesterday where, where this person trashed Lightroom. They trashed Lightroom and they, they trashed the article that was on Lightroom and they, they insisted that the person that wrote this article must have been paid. <laughs> of course. <laughs> because why would anyone use anything? It was Elements. So why would anyone use anything but Photoshop Elements to edit their photos? Why would you need, why would you need Lightroom? And, and, and I didn't write this to the person, but I, what, what I wanted to write is, is you learned elements, but you, you, learned it, you learned the really hard way to edit your photos. Oh, There's yeah, a much elements easier is way. tough. Think, think of, remember years ago, like what was it, you know, eight years ago, workflow. Oh, Every, everybody was, everything, you didn't teach workflow. Yeah, everything was workflow. That was the buzzword when it came to post-processing. You know why? Because digital images were so touchy. And we didn't have Lightroom eight, year, eight, nine years ago. And digital images were so touchy that if you didn't do your color first and then your exposure. And you sharpened and, last. And sharpened last and then you're retouching at the very right time, you would degrade your photo and your photo would be a mess. Images are so good today. And Lightroom doesn't care. Lightroom doesn't care if I do the exposure slider first and the sharpening slider last. Or a sharpen first. It could care less. It's it's it, there's no there's no part of this that it matters anymore. Yeah. So there was something that we used to use in photography every single day that we don't use anymore. You have it? Oh, I can't take it out of the plastic. We can show you it. Look, yeah. it's in a plastic case for emergency use. <laughs> All right, it's a roll of film. Now there are still people. There are still people that use film. But here's the thing. Is this what most people use? Is this what most of the pros use? If you were to go look at a magazine, almost any magazine cover today, is it gonna be shot with that? Or No, of course not. Look on my screen, can we see my screen? This is what people used to use all the time. Dude, I don't remember the last time if I wasn't opening it to show this example, I had curves open on my computer. Yeah. Because this is what we used to use. Are there still people that use curves? Yes. Are there still people that use film? Absolutely. Is that what people are really using today? No. And, and there are legitimate reasons why. There's all kinds of reasons why, but there will be people that will argue you to death on curves, they'll argue you to death on levels, and they'll argue you to death on film. There will always be purists that, that learned it one way and they're just not willing to go to that. There's, and I get it. I understand, yeah. and that's cool, and if that's, if that's your choice, but like I, I got a bad review on one of my books and it said, I bought this book called Photoshop Photographers, but you spend the first five chapters on camera raw. 
because I've replaced all the hard way to do it, mm -hmm. all the destructive way to do it, all that stuff. Remember the non-destructive workflow? It's yeah. all non-destructive now. Dude, and, and you know what it is, and, and, I, and I hope, and I know, I know a lot of people get this, is, is I, it's more fun to teach and it's more fun to learn now. So when was the last time somebody walked up to you and said, what's the exposure slider do, Scott? No. <laughs> right? No, they know. <laughs> because it, it, the software has gotten to the point where, where, where we don't have to spend our time figuring out what the exposure slider does. You can look at the exposure slider, you can move it one way or another, and you can figure it out, but the name has gotten to the point. Yeah, but when exposure. it was curves, do you know the barrier to, it's just, it's just, like, it's just like what's happened in photography. Yeah. The barrier to, like what Dave Black said, the barrier to entry 20, 30 years ago was really high. You had to have so many different things, you had to understand so many different things. Today, the barrier to entry is incredibly easy to post-processing because the sliders, for the most part, all kind of do what they say. Curves was not understandable. Nobody opened up curves and said, oh, I know what this does. But you open up Lightroom, you see an exposure slider, you know exactly what it does. All right, you reading comments or are we? Yeah, we've got some more comments here. So Quentin says this, uh, Quentin says, this may sound harsh and out of place, but it's the truth, so please be lenient. Okay, we'll be, we'll be nice to hear. How do you get clients that have class and that are planning beautiful weddings? Everyone who books me for weddings has no class. The backgrounds are never flattering because the venues always suck, or am I the problem? Okay, first off, Quentin, you're not the problem. But I, and you know what, Quentin, I tell you what, buddy, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you're a guy, maybe, maybe. I don't know, whoever you are, Quentin person. No, I think I know who Quentin is. I think I know who Quentin is. Quentin's a guy's name. We can go with the guy. Okay. Buddy, I know exactly where you are. When I was a graphic designer, my wife and I had a small design firm. And I remember like one day just sitting at my desk and I was so upset. And my wife's like, what's wrong? And I said, you know what? All we ever do is crappy jobs. We design black and white ads for crappy newspaper stuff. You know, I want to do an annual report. I want to do something in four color. I want to do something with a tear sheet. I want to do all these things. And all we ever get is those crap jobs. And you know what? For a long time, all I wanted to do was a four color job. I know that sounds ridiculous, <laughs> but there was a time where, where, I mean, I was so upset I was ready to quit because I did not get in to graphic design to design car ads like for the local used car dealer, yeah, right? That's like, you know, that has 50 a shoe, off, you know, and they're black and budget. white and then starbursts and all that crap. <clears throat> yeah, and a shoestring budget and all, that's not what I got into design to do. Everything that I studied, and I bet Quentin, you're the same way. And if you're the Quentin I think you are that I always see on Twitter, I know that you're serious about this stuff and I know that you study this stuff. You're not studying and working and, and taking classes and all this stuff because you wanna do you want to shoot weddings where the backgrounds aren't flattering and they're, they're taking, there's concrete block behind your, your brides and the venues suck and these things, like you're saying, y you want to do it. Okay, it's the same person. Okay, so I know who I'm talking to, Quentin. All right, so I, I so feel what you're going through, but you know what it is? You, you're, going to get, you're going to get a break and you're going to be able to land a, one great wedding because the first time I did a really nice, I finally got that four color job. Once I had the four color job and I could show, look, I did this. Yeah. It led to my next four color, my next year. A year later, all I was doing was four color work and I started doing these really high end brochures. It, it's like, I know it's like a catch 22. How do we get a good wedding when I have a crappy wedding? You just, you're, you just have to keep, now here's one thing you could do, Quentin. A lot of photographers have done this and this is probably gonna open up a can of worms. I know a lot of photographers that have hired a beautiful model, bought a wedding dress, went out and shot shots and says, here's what I can do. It is true what you can do. It's not necessarily true what you can do in the stress of a wedding, mm -hmm. but given a bride and given a beautiful scene, given a beautiful background, something like that, you could make enough shots to all of a sudden track those. But man, Quentin, I so get you. I so understand. And it, it really is tough. And so you don't have to worry about us being harsh. You've got a very serious, legitimate, <clears throat> tough thing to get around. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if the, what I told you would be the way. But let me tell you, figure this, Quentin. If I wanted to move into your town, I don't know where your town is, but let's just say that you're in small town and I wanted to rule that wedding market, I would go to your town 
I would find the four or five most beautiful locations where weddings are held. I'd go to the courthouse steps. I'd find the perfect church or whatever. I would hire four or five different brides. And when you came to my website, you would see nothing but fabulous brides, unbelievable locations shot at the perfect time of day in beautiful light. Because if you give me those things, I can do this. If you hire me at two o'clock in the afternoon and it's in the VFL, the, the VFW <laughs> Knights of Hall, Columbus. the Knights of Columbus Hall, and it's in a concrete background, I can't deliver the beautiful church steps shot if where if you're, no if where you're walking steps. out is the justice of the peace, or you know what I mean? It's like, or your, yeah. your brother in law's yeah. backyard. It's going to look like that, but you could own that market if you did that. And and I'd I'd be I'd be okay with that, like you said, because you you could still take the pictures where where you got to watch out for it. You see some people will go in a workshop. Yeah, not somebody, somebody else, else's workshop. Somebody else hired and they got you somebody got else holding in the light and you no. and they clicked and then you went back with a portfolio. You got to you got to find the brides. You got to find the dresses. You got to do the whole thing. Yeah. Work out a deal with a local dress shop. But anyway, and you. It, but man, I, a bride, I, I, I a feel you. Day. I feel you. Hey, um, we've got a, a couple other things to talk about. We're, we're almost out of time. We have a, one or two more real quick things, um, but they're important things for the State of the Union. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about cell phone cameras and some interesting things about that. We're going to show you a quick video that I guarantee will be the highlight of the show. <laughs> and a uh, whole lot more right here. Don't go away. We're live on the grid. Need a little boost? Then fill up on fuel. Packed with practical tools and tips that will help you quickly advance your creative skills, these books get right to the heart of what you need to learn. Learn to shoot breathtaking nature photography, teach yourself game design, or impress your friends with the rock and design of your new website. Written by top authors and trainers, Fuelbooks offers friendly, straightforward instruction and innovative ideas to power your creativity. Starting at just $5, every Fuelbook comes in three formats, Mobi, EPUB, and an elegantly laid out PDF, so you can choose the reading experience that works best for you on whatever device you choose. Fuelbooks, designed to inspire you. Hey, everybody, we're back. Scott and Matt are here. Hey, uh, so um, just two, two quick questions. Gomez, 1856 comments, I'm sorry. Bands are learning that the old model of CD sales isn't working anymore, and they're creating unique projects, products, using technology that's historically been, never historically been available. Man, I can't read that, Matt. I apparently haven't. <laughs> creating reading. unique products, using technology that's never historically been available, streaming shows, live downloads, et cetera. We should be looking to do the same. Stand out with products and services that are cutting edge. Yeah. Very, absolutely. Absolutely. Paulie D says, Scott, I noticed you do not work your, watermark your images. Why? A couple of reasons. Number one is it will never stop someone from stealing your photo. Number two, it looks bad on your photos. Number three, I'm hoping that somebody will steal my photos. Hopefully, Exxon, <laughs> Walmart, you know, Apple, anybody, any big company. I hope they steal it and I can find it. I, I always ask the question when somebody asks me that. I say, why would I watermark them? What, what's it going to do? Like, yeah. Well, it'll keep somebody from stealing. No, it no, won't. Well, no, no, well, it just makes my photos look ugly. Yeah. And, and somebody, somebody who wants to steal it is probably going to be bad enough at Photoshop that they're not going to do a good job of removing the watermark, but they're going to try. And there's oh, yeah. nothing I can do about it. Nope. Or they're just going to crop it to where your watermark is removed. And so yeah. it, you're not, believe me, you're not helping yourself. Now, if you're watermarking for branding purposes, if you just like, I'm trying to get my name out there, I'm not trying to protect the image, I'm trying to build a brand with this photo, nobody knows me and I want to get my name out there, that's something. All right. Tamara Lackey, by the way, Tamara Lackey does a great job of that. I always like what she does with her photo. Yeah. She, she, she does it in a very classy way, so it's not the, it's not covering the photo. Right. She puts it on the side or the bottom of the photo. So go, go. To, go to her blog and you, you'll see it there. All right. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about, this is another State of the Union, is we have to get our heads around where are we at right now? Cell phone cameras are getting legit. Cell phone cameras that we used to completely dismiss are totally getting legit. Look, look at this. This is the Nokia Luma, Lumia 1020. This is the 41 megapixel camera that you see the ads on for TV. And so 
Uh, I've got to tell you, I've got some samples here. I shot with it myself. Um, you can actually go in here into the software and it's got manual mode. You can set your own manual settings for it. 41 megabits. It's 41. Okay, first I want to talk about why would you want, because people are going, this is ridiculous to have a 41 megapixel thing. I'm going to show you exactly why, because think of this. Think of, real quick, just for a near moment, a, a point-and-shoot camera. That's not a point-and-shoot camera. Let's just pretend it is. Let's pretend. A point-and-shoot camera, when you went to zoom, mm -hmm. the lens would actually extend outside the body. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it'd be out this long, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, those crazy ones. This is your phone, right? This is your phone. You're not going to have it extending out. And that the, I don't know of a single phone, not that there isn't one, because there's so many phones that have one that extend out. But the reason why you want a 41 megapixel camera is because it doesn't zoom like that. It doesn't zoom. So here's what you're going to do. Can we, can we look at my computer? So here's a picture I took. I pulled this out and when I was shooting an NFL game with my big lenses, right? And I pulled this out. So here's about the size. Let me see if I, I'm going to get this to the size of the Lumia screen. This is a little tiny bigger than, than the screen on the Lumia 1080, right? Excuse me, 1020, the Lumia, Nokia Lumia 1020, all right? This is a little bit larger than the size of the screen. And this is what we're used to taking with our cell phones, mm -hmm. right? Like you're standing there, and I'm in the end zone, and they're maybe at the 30-yard line, and they might as well be in another state. Here's what a 41-megapixel camera does for this. Watch. That's 100%. Now, this is your cell phone photo. You can crop into here. And now I have this, so it's a little large. Now you can see, oh, it's the Eagles. Oh, that's Nick Foles. He had a good year, didn't he? Boy, just, you know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you do it. The reason why is I now have a zoomed-in picture. That's, that's what it's really all about. That's why anybody cares whether it's a 41 megapixel. So I, I, I get that. I really do. But I want everybody to realize, I'm going to say that this is the year when you start having 41. And, and you know what? I would have to say that people now care about what their cell phone photos look like. And you know what? Uh, I think that I I'm amazed at some of the pictures that my wife takes with her cell phone. And you know what? She, she always says, you know what the difference between me and you is? You carry DSLR. So when you pick up your cell phone, you think, well, these are photos I don't care about. She treats her, her iPhone, she calls it her trusty iPhone, like it's a DSLR. She takes time. She's steady with it. She does post-processing all in here. I don't, yeah. I, people think I do her post-processing. Oh, you Scott does your, no, she does her. She wouldn't let me do her post. <laughs> She's like, I have my own thing. I do it my own way using camera plus, she says. But she really tries to compose it. She really thinks about it. She sets it up. If the stuff isn't right on the table, she'll move it. I mean, she's treating it like we would treat it with a DSLR. But when I go to my phone, then I just go click, you know. But, but any way you want to say it, this is the year where cell phones got legit. Now, I'm going to run a video. <laughs> from Nokia, Nokia did this video, and you're gonna crack up because it's trying to make the case that you don't need a DSLR anymore. I think it's even, even at the end it says like, goodbye DSLR. Yeah. But I, I want you to take a look at what they're, 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 they're shooting everything with a sports lens. They're shooting portraits like from me to Matt with a 300 millimeter. I mean, it, they're, they're doing it to make a point and it's kind of funny, but let's go ahead and run the video and then we'll just break it down. So here we go, take a look at this video. I got a good, I got a good parallel. Humans constantly strive to capture the beauty and the majesty of their surroundings. Leaping from landmark to landmark, backpacks bursting with lenses, tripods, and batteries. Endlessly clicking away on the hunt for great composition, sometimes forsaking dignity. Bemusing others with cumbersome contraptions, barking that orders the from a distance. At least, that's how it used to be. <laughs> Bounces like a rubber ball. Now there's a better way, a 41 megapixel way, and it's in your phone. If your phone is a Nokia Lumia 1020. Now you can capture the perfect shot and choose the perfect frame. Pride intact. You can give a farewell salute to awkward accessories <laughs> because your Nokia Lumia 1020 lets you go fully manual or simply point and click. If that was the manual. Say goodbye to the DSLR and hello to the Nokia Lumia 1020.
What that really should say is goodbye compact point and shoot. That's what it really should say. Goodbye yeah. compact camera, goodbye point and shoot. I love the way, that's a 400, that was a Canon 400 millimeter F2.8. Everybody point walks eight. around with what one, don't was, they? What it was, was, why it looked different, why it, I thought it was the 300 at first glance, it's the 400, they just taken off the lens hood. Yeah. So that's the 400, like, like you would be standing eight feet from someone with a 400, here, can you take a shot of me? So that, that kind, that part is funny. But you know what? The compact flash market, the market for point and shoot cameras, is pretty much evaporated because of this. Um, my phone has built-in Wi-Fi. It's got um, editing. It's got the apps I want and all. Now, and, and I know, and I know that some of these compact phones are now getting that. Right? Yeah. There's phones that are now getting Android backs and stuff. And and, and I th so I think one of the, one of the reasons why this is is taken on so much is because of so think about where business is done. All right, so much business is done on social media. Right. Yeah. So, so, and, and I have an example. So I go to this, um, I go to this CrossFit gym right down the road here mm -hmm. and they have a couple of people that work on their website. Cause you, th you know, think about it's a gym yeah. in a local market. W what's your best means of communicating and getting out to that local market? The friends of friends of friends of people who go to your gym. So they got about two or three people that are always in there and they're always taking pictures. This is their business. So it can't just be like, ah, eh, throw up, ksh, done, go on, on you know, post it online and it's blurry and it doesn't look good. They, these people have actually, like, they've gotten good at taking pictures with their cell phone because that's what they have with them when they're there. And that's how this company, and I'm sure many other companies out there, are actually increasing their businesses through their social media pages. How it looks is really important. And I think that people are starting, I'm looking for something here. People yeah. are starting to to realize that that stuff matters. I just I'm gonna give me just a second to find this image if I can just. But and I think it I think it makes I think it kind of shows that I'm sure that that's not the only business that's out there that makes a living off of or, or helps make a living off of their social media right. pages and those photos need to look good. Yeah, C can we can we show this picture on screen? This is one that so this is a pretty decent picture. My wife took this with her iPhone. She treats that thing, and but you know what it is. I mean, I, th I think it's a really good picture. I mean, she yeah. showed it to me. I'm like, I love that. And, and she really does have a knack, knack for it. But I but, really want that chocolate cupcake. I know, that chocolate <laughs> cupcake. Looks, but you know what? That's the mark of a great food shot right there is that you see it and you want to eat it. Uh -huh. If you see a food shot and you're like, ugh, you know. But, but here's the thing about this stuff is you can take great pictures with today's cell phones. Now... DSLRs give you all these other advantages. We've got actual optical zooms we're not cropping in, you know, and where where that the video we saw was making fun of the accessories, we live for the accessories and stuff. But I do think that in this if I had to do a state of the union about photography, I would say that 2013 and, and moving into this year is the year where cell phones got legit. I think you're only going to see cell phone qualities get better. Can I add a point to that, though? Please do. I think it will. I, so I agree with you on that. And I think what it'll do for camera sales, DSLR camera sales, and even even uh, mirrorless, and we can talk about yeah. that for a second here. But even as it makes that go, I think it's only good for photography because you get you get this and you start to take pictures. And what happens is, is you start you to get a, a good eye and you become a photographer and people are like, wow, that's a cool picture. And then you start to think or see examples of how you can do better. And that's when you move up to a different camera. Right. Now, my wife, no matter what, will not call herself a photographer. I don't care what you say. She will. She's like, I'm not a photographer. I can argue this to death. I was going to see like there's another shot I was looking for. She will argue it to death and swear to you that she is not a photographer. She's like, no way. I'm the, you know, and she will not let anyone call her a photographer. Take a look at this shot. This is another one that she took with her her phone. And I'm like, I think if someone showed me that, if I had to critique it, I'd go. Well, maybe I would have shown a little bit more of the, but I would have said good exposure, good composition, yeah. really looks good. I love nice the post subject, processing. You know? I'd have to nitpick it to find something I don't like. Now it is my wife, and I'm her biggest fan, so I, I may be a little biased. But I think the fact that you can take shots like this with your phone that don't go into Photoshop, that aren't even, you know, all she promises, she only uses one app. She uses Camera Plus. Uh, I, I think she does great with that with that camera. I, and I, she is a photographer. She won't say it, and she'll kill me for just mentioning that thing because. She she doesn't want to be known as a photographer because then it puts pressure on you. <laughs> so um, now, so that was it. I, th I think that this is the year it came of age. I think 2014, what are we going to be in December when we do a wrap-up show? 
with cell phones. There's going to be a new iPhone. Do you think in the new iPhone, the iPhone 6, the camera's going to get better, or they're just going to leave it just like it yeah, is? It's, I don't think it's going to be 9 megapixels. <laughs> no, I think there's going to be something else that, that brings into it. Yeah. All right, the last one is we're going to wrap things up. Oh, before I do the wrap, the last thing, I just want to mention a contest. This is, uh, if you want to get into the contest to win one of our prizes, go to kelby1.com slash webcasts slash contest. So it's kelby1.com. I guess you can just go slash contest. It'll take you there. You don't have to do the webcasts. But uh, there's a little form where you enter. You put in what show you're watching. By the way, you're watching The Grid. You put your name. You put your email. You leave us a comment. You know what I would leave in the comment? We have three prizes. My Lightroom book, the... It's not an... Olo I, clip. I always call it Olo. Olo, it's yes, Olo. Olo. Clip. Olo clip. Or the one year of a Kelby One subscription. Uh, and then you can win that. Uh, just tell us the one you want to win. So if we pick one, we give you one that you want. Also, there is a special deal for our readers from Peach Pit. Peach Pit always gives us like 40% off an ebook. The ebook they're giving 40% off to our viewers today is a brand new book from Lindsay Adler. It's called Creative 52. And we saw it when Lindsay was on the show. Very, very cool book. Um, it's at peachpit.com slash Kelby1. That's where you go to get it. And then there's a checkout code to get 40% off. And the code is... Kelby one. one, you get her book for $16.79. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so thank you to Peach Pit for that. Our last thing is, here's something that, that, that happened that is our State of the Union right now that I don't think mirrorless. It isn't catching on like everybody thought it would. There were very big, wide-sweeping predictions that mirrorless was going to wipe out the DSLR market. Nobody would buy DSLR anymore. There was all kinds of, of big, big things. I think it's caught on somewhat in Japan, mm -hmm. but it really hasn't made its way here at the levels that everybody thought it would. And do I think we're gonna wind up using mirrorless in the end? Yes, probably. But it just like, uh, I don't think, uh, a Nikon has one, but it hasn't caught on. Nikon yeah. might have two or something. Well, they have the, 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 what JV it, the J, something? yeah, and then there's the, yeah, I don't, that newer one. Canon may or may not have one. Uh, Fuji, are the Fujis mirrorless? Brad will know. Brad, are the Fujis mirrorless? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm asking the wrong person. RC will, you know what? In a moment, RC will kick on and tell us whether yeah. the Fujis are. But you know what? I would say, what is catching on right now? If I had to say what is catching on is retro-looking cameras, strictly for the looks. Retro-looking yes, cameras. Yes, Fuji's mirrorless. Okay, Fuji is mirrorless. Yes. They make some mirrorless. Mm -hmm. But is that the one everybody buys? No. Sony's got one too, right? Sony, the A7, the yeah, A7R right. is mirrorless. I mean, I, the A7R is 36 megapixels. Yeah, but I would say that might be the one that's probably caught on the most. But anyway, so, um, but I think the reason why a lot of those cameras are catching on is because they look really cool. I don't think the A7 looks maybe quite as cool as like the, the new Nikon or the, or some of the ones, but you're really buying yeah, Fuji those. Fuji X-Pro1, mirrorless. Fuji X-Pro1 is mirrorless for a thousand bucks. Uh, and they're all, but that's like. <laughs> they're not cheaper. <laughs> no, they're not cheaper, but that's a second camera. Now, I know a lot of photographers that have the Fujis and stuff, and, and it's their second camera. Like yeah. When they go, I want to carry something light. I don't feel like taking my whole DSLR. You know why I never am going to have one of those probably? I don't want to say never because, yeah. I mean, you never know. But why I haven't gotten one so far, how's that? What's that? Because I got a phone. And my phone keeps getting better and better and better. Yeah. This is what's killing me from getting a second camera. Because if I need to take a photo, this is always, always, always with me. Always. Yeah, that, that mirrorless, that mirrorless is not so small. That mirrorless is not so small that I can't take my camera with, you know, a versatile, like a, a 35 to 135 lens, you know. Right. I mean, it'd be one thing if, because if you take a camera without a battery grip and you, you're not going to put a 70 to 200 on it, I'm not saying it's small. It's still, it's, it's got some bulk to it, but that mirror, it's not like that mirrorless is this. That mirrorless is still like two thirds of the size, or you know. Oh, here's a good. So Kathy P. It's not Kathy Perupski, is it? No, she doesn't sell cameras. Kathy P. Says the Sony NEX5 is what I sell to someone who wants DSLR quality but is afraid of a DSLR. I can sell an NEX like no tomorrow to those people. Yeah. So that's that's a good point. That is a good point. So if you you want that kind of quality but you don't want to mess with all that stuff, that's good. But you know what? Here's so Kathy. While I think that's a good thing. I just can't see me. I don't want to have a phone in my pocket and then another phone around my neck. 
and then another phone back. I, I mean, I, I see you saying a phone, <laughs> a camera in my pocket, and then another camera. And then, you know, it's like, that's just me. But anyway, the, the overall state is while mirrorless may be coming, and it's here to some extent, it's still not caught on in the big picture. Mm -mm. You know, I, I, it, it, well, here's this. It hasn't caught on at the level everybody thought it would. That's kind of where we are with mirrorless right now. So it's maybe this year will be a, the year it breaks out. Yeah. It's, what do you think? Do you think? So have you, have you, shot, with, have you shot with any mirrorless cameras yet? I've played with them. I haven't, like, taken one out and done a serious shoot. Because I've, I've kind of played with a few of them. And with the, with the exception of the Sony A7R, which I, I loved, um, with the exception of that, image quality has been good. But it's, it's lacking features. And, again, image quality has been kind of good. And so I think that's, that's when you, everybody who's got a DSLR, that's kind of their holdup. Is, you know, what's everybody concerned about? Image quality. What's the first thing we always hear yeah, about lenses and Fuji, sharpness? Some of the Fujis have nice image quality. Yeah, no, I, I have seen some. It's just, I don't know. It, it, I think that's still a holdup is, is people, people aren't seeing the same image quality that they're that, used to getting out of the DSLR. True. Yeah. And you know what? Nobody wants to go, wow, look how really good that is. And you say, wow, that's really good for a mirrorless. Yeah. You just want to go, that's really good, period, anyway. All right, well, guys, that's all the time we have for today's show. Uh, but, hey, here, you know, you know what? Um, I was going to send you to another website, but don't worry about it. Uh, what did I want to say? I'm sorry? My guest blog. Oh, go check oh, out like, my... I enjoyed that oh, one. I got a good guest blogger today, Elia Licardio. To say it right, I always spell his, say his name wrong. Elia, I thought it was Elia. Elia? Oh, gosh. No one really knows how to pronounce his name. <laughs> but what's sad is he's one of my favorite photographers. He, he is an unbelievable travel photographer, an incredibly nice guy. But his travel photography and his, yeah. his use of HDR... If you hate HDR, go see his stuff and you'll, he'll make you like it again. But, but he doesn't do just HDR, but he does wonderful travel photography yeah. all around the world. And he does workshops and stuff. He's got a very, go to my blog, scottkelby.com, and check out his guest blog post today. If you don't read a word, you'll love the images, but definitely read the words because it's got yeah, a, great, a great story. Yeah, it's a great story, and he's a great guy. So uh, anyway, uh, thanks to uh, Brad and crew here on the set for helping us out. Thanks to all of our sponsors whose names appeared at the bottom of the screen. And we will see you guys. No, we have a guest next Wednesday. Who's our guest? I'm looking at Brad like you would know. Joe. Isn't Joe. Joe's McNally. here. Joe McNally. Do that face with me. <laughs> <laughs> that way I can screen capture it. Anyway, Joe McNally is going to be our in-studio guest. I'm Joe, out next week, so. Are you? <laughs> I am. Oh, dude, we're going to tear it up. Joe is the best guest. He really, when you move on, on as an in-studio guest, I mean, you know he's just, just phenomenal. So please come and check us out next week. for. Oh, and tell your friends. Come see Joe next Wednesday. Take care, everybody.